What is good, Nation? It's Stock J back with another video. And in this one, I'm going to be talking about the one and only AMC stock. I'm going to talk about the video and what's going on with the overall market from SPY to the QQQ and also for Tesla. I'm going to break down what the data is telling us and what's going on with the debt ceiling and how all of this may affect AMC and the market moving forward. Before I break anything down about AMC and talk about what's going on, I do have to mention a couple of things before starting. Firstly, I am not a financial planner. Make sure you take none of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire Ape community as a whole. And the last thing is, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo, the link down below and deposit 100 bucks into the account, you're guaranteed up to 10 free stocks, each worth up to $3,000. And the best part is that it could be a free AMC Neo or Tesla share. The offer ends very, very soon. It ends in just about 11 hours. So check it out before they run out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. AMC is down 2.81% for the day as of right now. And the real question is, how is she going to move going forward? Could AMC get a balance here? Is AMC going to continue to just trade sideways? And this will depend heavily on the market, in my opinion, and what happens with this debt ceiling. At least that's going to play a big role in it. Now, to start us off, when it comes to earnings, we have some tech earnings for tomorrow. We have Dollar General. We have Macy's for the retail side. Not to mention ChargePoint and Dell. And Dell is going to be a very important one for tomorrow, so make sure you watch that. And then finally, when it comes to data, we just have some initial jobless claims data, the PMI report and things like that. Uh, initial jobless claims is coming out one hour before the market opens. And the rest of the data from the PMI reports to the manufacturing data will be coming out between 15 minutes after open and about an hour after open. So every 15 to 30 minutes, big data will be coming out for the first hour of the day. But then after that, uh, I'm not seeing too many Fed speakers or anything else like that. There's just, there's just one Fed speaker later on that's coming out. Then for Friday, we have the unemployment rate, and that's going to be much more impactful. Now, right now, the debt ceiling vote will be starting. Uh, they're slowly voting on a bunch of different amendments and other things like that. And very soon, the House will be voting on it. Now, McConnell, Mitch McConnell came out and he said it's very likely that the House will pass the debt ceiling agreement for today and then it should go on to the Senate by tomorrow. Remember, we have very limited time. Janet Yellen said June 5th is going to be the hard deadline. She extended it by one day. They have to get this done as soon as possible. And we're starting to see some progress. I don't know if they're going to raise it or not. And the market so far has had a very interesting uh, reaction. If they raise it, the market could pump. If they don't raise it, the market may just continue to slide and trade sideways. Uh, for now, I would rather just be very, very uh, cautious, be very patient with this. And we'll see what happens. I think by the time you watch this video, maybe some people will watch it after a couple of hours and the vote will be out. We'll see how the market responds. I will go over both the bullish and bearish cases anyways. AMC has like no volume, only 13 million in volume. Not a whole lot is going on there. Price price ratio is very low. Not much is going on right here. Uh, to move forward now with what's going on with the markets, SPY had a very interesting day, kind of pumped in the morning. I'm sorry, it came down in the morning, then pumped after getting this bounce off the 200 EMA. I predicted the market would see some downside, but then we, we did see the downside initially, but then we bounced thanks to some bullish news from the Fed speakers and also from many House reps and President Joe Biden on the progress being made on the debt ceiling. That played a big role, not to mention uh, Jefferson from the Fed was saying that there could be a pause coming very soon, but he said it may not be the final uh, pause. The rate hike could still hike the, the initial, I'm sorry, the overall rate, the terminal rate could still go up despite that. But overall, that the market liked it. Then the question is, will the market continue to try to bounce here? We're on the verge of getting a crossover on the PPO, and it is very possible, but this will depend heavily on the debt ceiling. If we're bullish, watch a break of the 50 EMA above this 418.34 resistance, break and hold that, and we have a good chance of making our way up to 420. If we fail to do so, okay, uh, make sure you watch around this 417.5 support. If that fails, you know, this thing still has some potential to come all the way back down to about 416.8, followed by 416.17, which is where the 200 EMA is. That's the major support for now. Watch both of those very carefully, okay? And I am leaning a little bit more bullish now because I'm very optimistic about this dead ceiling. I think they're going to get something done. I'm hoping something like that happens. Now for Tesla, if we're really bullish, you know, if it breaks 205, it's going to fly all the way up to 207 plus. Uh, I got a very bullish move thanks to Elon Musk and some news about him. We got a crossover on the one hour time frame on the PPO. 
And for now, it's looking pretty decent. Nice bounce off the 50 EMA. Uh, if Tesla keeps pumping, that could be pretty good for the markets, but a Tesla may have to retrace a little bit. Uh, if it does retrace a bit, uh, we could see it retest around 200 first before it continues. But for now, it's looking pretty decent, right? Pretty, pretty decent. Uh, as far as, uh, let's see what else is there. The QQQ goes, uh, if it breaks this resistance, the high of the day, basically, if it breaks and holds 348.8, we can see this thing fly into the 350s and even fill this gap at 350 flat. If it breaks down, you're going to be watching the 50 EMA at this 346 support. 346.95 is going to be the current importance level. If it breaks below that, it's going to make its way closer to about the 345s, in my opinion. Uh, if it breaks this support, that's what's going to happen. For now, and even today, it held this support. It, it just barely went below it and just like bounced above it. So just watch that very carefully on the triple Q. And finally, for AMC, uh, AMC is not really doing anything, still just trading sideways. There's going to be some resistance at this 50 EMA around this 4.64 level. And then also support is going to be around the 4.25 level. That's the next major support zone. Not much is going on with AMC. Uh, like I said before, we're just waiting for the whole settlement with APE to see if we're going to get the conversion and spend so long. I mean, we're still waiting for the lawsuit. We're still many weeks away. Until then, I don't, don't expect too much to happen, except AMC could get a bounce thanks to the potential bullish divergence that's developing right here on the RSI. You can see the RSI is on an uptrend, so is that MACD. And if the dead ceiling causes the market to rip a bit, this could help AMC make its way up to, to 4.64 and then potentially closer to 4.9 if it does break this level. Now, am I promising it? Not necessarily, but I think it's very likely that the deal could cause the market to pump. The market may have a little bit more juice left, and that could help AMC temporarily. But until then, always remember to be very patient and remain calm, cool, and collected. And let me just remind you guys, I have some merch for you guys. If you want to buy some tank tops, hoodies, or shirts that say to the moon, or buy low, sell high, or anything like that, anything in support of the apes, it's really your choice. I'm here for you guys. I've been here for years. I'm not leaving you. And I also have the Moomoo link. The offer ends very soon. Deposit 100 bucks, and you're guaranteed up to 10 free stocks. Last but not least, I think I was talking about NVIDIA. I think I forgot to mention this. For NVIDIA, I predicted yesterday this thing would get a sell off to 390 or so. Instead, it went all the way down to 377. Kathy Wood said NVIDIA is overvalued. And there's a potential bullish divergence that's in the process of development, but we need confirmation first. It could get a bounce from here. I am looking for a potential bounce looking at the RSI, but there's no confirmation yet. And the trend is still in favor of the bears for now, unless we get that bounce. The bounce could be closer to about like 375. That's where you have some nice support. It could retest 375, then bounce off that, or it could just try to bounce from here. That's what I'm leaning towards on NVIDIA. But anyways, whether you're into NVIDIA, AMC, SPY, Tesla, whatever you like to trade, futures, ES, or whatever, it's all up to you. Just know the future is very bright nonetheless. Remain calm, cool, and collected, and I'll see you guys in the next one. AMC in a video in the market to the moon as the long term is still incredibly bright. And peace out.